So every week we serve about 135 families. We have about 100 volunteers that come through uh, to make our services possible. And they know I was going to be here today. And they said, Pastor, when you're with the Harborside students, you got to thank them for us. Because what you guys do makes a big difference. And we could not be more excited about the culminating event on the 13th. Um, we've been operating for five years, and you guys are helping us celebrate. And our, our team, our Grace Welcome Center family, is just so thankful for your guys' efforts, your guys' wisdom, uh, what you guys are bringing to that. And Harborside and Grace Welcome Center have a long history together. The very first food drive that ever happened at Grace Welcome Center was done by a Harborside Academy student, Celeste. Uh, back now more than four years ago. Uh, we're going to get into a little bit more of the numbers later, but that food drive that she ran as a seventh grader? Yep, seventh grader. As a seventh grader, uh, it's now multiplied into almost 300,000 pounds of food getting uh, coming into our pantry and going out of our pantry each, each year. So we know that this is a special group of students. We know that what happens here at Harborside uh, it's not just something about academics. It's not just about uh, you guys being formed into people who will change the world later. But we know at Grace Welcome Center that there are world changers, Kenosha changers in our midst. And so it's a real privilege. And then I also, uh, I'm just aware that this, this room of students, as Mr. Underwood said, we are living through dark times. Uh, we're living through a rapidly changing community, uh, country, and world. And we're putting a lot of hopes on your generation. And when I look out, I see people that are going to meet this moment. I, I feel encouraged and hopeful in dark times looking out at this generation, trusting that where my generations failed, where the generations that went before me have failed, uh, you, guys are gonna, you guys are going to make it happen. When, when I go to TikTok, when I see what's going on uh, more broadly with your generation, I mean, your generation really gets it. So it's really, I feel really honored to be here with you all and excited not just to work with you towards the culminating event, not work on projects uh, for the next month, but I'm excited to, to read the Kenosha news for the next like 20 years and be in touch with Mr. Underwood for the next 20 years and see what all of you will do to make our world better, uh, to serve humanity both near and far. Because I know that there's some, again, some real world changes in this room. Uh, but we have a little bit of a problem over at Grace. We're getting ready for our five-year anniversary. We've been operating for five years, and we don't have any history. We haven't had the opportunity to sit down and think about things because of the journey we've been on. Because five years ago, when we started, we had one coffee pot from my house. Uh, it was just one of those 12-cup coffee makers of Mr. Coffee. Uh, we had four volunteers, including myself, and we had six guests. That was the first day of Grace Welcome Center. Uh, just to give you a little sense of how much things have changed, in March, we served 717 households. Not individuals, but households. That includes 1,964 adults and 929 children. So we went from serving six guests to serving 717 households. It's been an amazing journey. It's been a busy journey. Uh, I'll give you guys some more numbers just to kind of capture how much things have changed. In 2021, the, obviously that's the last year we have full um, numbers for, we served 6,835 households. 6,835 households. We serve 14,522 adults and 8,623 children. And to do that, we had to pass out 297,000 pounds of food. 297,000 pounds of food. Uh, that going from one uh, coffee maker to that, uh, that going from Celeste, first food drive ever to that. So it's been a busy five years. Uh, there's been a lot of things that have happened, many things that we can't remember. Uh, so we would love to have a history of what's happened the last five years. How did we go from four, uh, four volunteers, six guests, and a coffee maker to the numbers I just shared with you? And so it is my great hope 
that you all, as students of history, will create a history of Grace Welcome Center. You will make a timeline for where we have been. And when, when I think about that, I, I, there's so many reasons I hope you guys will say yes to this project, get excited about this. One of the reasons is, as we mentioned, history really changes the way people see the world. And I think if you share the story of what happened at Grace Welcome Center, there are going to be people who find that inspiring, who want to get involved in new ways in our community, who want to serve community both near and far. Part of why we want to do this is our volunteers haven't gotten to think about what they're up to. What have they been up to? They've been busy carrying boxes and moving food and helping people and serving humanity. When we all come together and you're going to have 100 volunteers, but you're even going to have more than that because we have volunteers coming from all over the country uh, and certainly all over the state to be part of this, who at one point or in one way or another have connected with what happens at Grace Welcome Center. Uh, we want to be able to thank them and be grateful uh, for their hard work and to have a history that says, man, this is all that you guys accomplished. I mean, that's going to be awesome, and that's going to really uplift our volunteer team, and it's going to give them a boost because, you know, you, you don't get to the five-year anniversary mark and then say, you know what, we're done. Uh, I mean, it's always our hope. It's our hope every week that hunger in Kenosha will end and we can shut down our food pantry because there's not a single hungry person in our town. That's always our top goal. But our, our second goal is as long as there's hungry people to keep our doors open and figure out how to get food out into the community. And so part of doing that is keeping our volunteers feeling strong and encouraged. And, and you guys have a tremendous opportunity to help with that. Uh, the other thing I'll name is Harborside has a great way of helping us think about who we are. So four years ago, there was a culminating event. And one of the, the gifts that was given to us was a six panel art piece uh, that each panel was a different color of the rainbow. And it had a black silhouetted vine. And some of you got to see this on the tour. Uh, we show everybody, to this day, for the last four years, everybody that gets a tour gets to see the, the, uh, the, the mural. And it, part of why it's so special to us, part of why we show it to everybody, is it captured something about what we were trying to do that we didn't, know how, we didn't have words for. But when we saw this piece of art that a student made, we said, yes, that is who we think we are. You captured something about ourselves that we didn't totally have words for or an image for or know how to talk about. And maybe we didn't even fully realize about it ourselves. And I think the same is true with history. When you guys make a history about what's happened at Grace Welcome Center, you're going to help us understand who we are, where we've been. And you're actually going to form who we are going into the future, which is a, a weighty responsibility. Don't, if I invite you to do the history, don't screw up. Because if you get the history wrong, you might lead us to think we're less than or not able to do this work right or might have a bad sense of who we are. And then the other thing I'll name is, is history has a way of, of uniting people, right? And so, but uh, there's a way in which history ties people together. And so when we meet people that haven't been part of the first five years, whether they be people in Kenosha, whether they be people that want to make donations, whether they be new people that want to volunteer, by having a history, we can invite them into what's happened. They can't experience it directly, but they can read about it and learn about what they're uh, getting involved in. And so there's a way that this creates some hospitality. I'm going to, uh, I know we're, maybe there's going to be time for some questions, and I also want to turn it over to Mr. Underwood to fill in some details for you all. Okay.